Well, I did actually think we're done recording for the day, but I happened to open my phone and found this very interesting article, news.com.au. Yes, I am down under. Comment. Thanks to some candid photos of Pete Evans and Chris Hemsworth, a much bigger and more awkward truth has been exposed. And the headline that will capture your attention is, there's a wild reason why these men aren't hot anymore. So this piqued my interest because I thought, well, I knew what was going to happen, basically. Um, Anyone who's posting a picture of Thor and saying that he's not hot anymore is going to be attempting some kind of social construction of undermining. And we'll have a, it'll be an operational thing. It'll have a purpose. It'll be serving some kind of purpose because it's objectively not true. I'm pretty sure plenty of women out there would love to date Chris Hemsworth. But let's see. So we actually have this lovely lady on the team, Mary Madigan. She seems like a lovely person, um, but she has taken it upon herself to declare Chris Hemsworth not hot anymore. And how this could come about and what its purposes is, I, I thought might make an interesting analysis. So Chris Hemsworth and Pete Evans are struggling with the same issue. What is that issue? Looking through this article. So we have a picture of Pete Evans. Apparently he shares too many opinions. Chris Hemsworth posts his online workouts too much. And that would be enough to turn someone like Mary Madigan off any of these men, apparently. <laughs> because they were, they're within the realm of, of her being turned off by that. <laughs> she would not date these men. As you can see, she's clearly much higher status than they are. So they need to strive for her approval. Or so she would like to have you believe. Uh, yet they're both suffering from the same syndrome. It is impossible to be famous in Australia and not get overly saturated. Men who are famous down under have no chance of staying hot and mysterious. Uh, let's see what she's talking about. Aussies don't let famous men stay hot because we want to get to know them. Don't believe me? Look at Guy Sebastian. He was relatively hot. Now, uh, so what she says, so when someone gets famous, when we get a little too invested in them, the hot men aren't safe. They were both hotter when we didn't know much about them. They were mysterious, cool, and sexy. They were the guy at the club drinking straight scotch and making smoldering eyes at you from across the room. <laughs> so, yes, that, that's correct. Mary Madigan here had men like Keanu Reeves, Pete Evans, Chris Hemsworth, drinking straight scotch and, and giving her the sexy eyes across the room from the bar. And apparently now she's bored. She is bored because she knows too much about them. So men like Chris Hemsworth are just simply not hot anymore. Um, we know here, going further through the article, we know Pete is afraid of, of COVID vaccine, or should it say of the COVID vaccine. Um, apparently Mary needs to be able to afford a, an editor. Uh, we know that Pete's afraid of the COVID vaccine and it says here under his profile of a, a very strapping, fresh-faced Australian, tanned Australian gentleman in a, in a nice suit. Pete was sexier when we didn't know his opinions. So for Mary Madigan, Pete's opinions about the COVID vaccine disqualify him from ever dating her. Poor Pete. Um, and Chris posts far too many videos of himself working out. And under a caption of Chris Hemsworth on his yacht with his six pack glistening, she says, Chris was hotter before we knew everything about him. <laughs> and she wrote, I know so much about these men, they aren't a fantasy anymore. They've both successfully given me the ick. Now the ick is a word that came out this year in Australian reality TV, which means you've really comprehensively turned someone off. So Mary Madigan here, this lovely young lady, has been successfully turned off by Chris Hemsworth and Pete Evans. She would not consider dating them because she knows too much about them. Chris posts too much of his workouts and Pete Hemsworth voices his opinions about the COVID vaccine. <laughs> what a smorgasbord 
of analysis potential. Where can we begin? So this is a great example of what we talk about when we say social construction. Uh, this lady here has a, a platform with which to give her opinions, give her a cultural analysis or analysis of people. And what will happen is those opinions will go out and influence the minds of other, other people like her. And they may intuit that there's something to gain if what she's saying came to be adopted as common, uh, common opinion. I think it's quite obvious what the gain for her is, but when other people reinforce what she's saying and they all mutually agree that men like Chris Hemsworth should strive and struggle to be worthy of dating women like Mary Madigan, that's what we call social construction. And it ties into, once again, the empathetic versus systematic brains. You know, the a definition of empathy is the ability to predict another's emotional state and respond in kind. The definition of systematizing is the ability to deduce the underlying rules of systems and understand them and predict those. So that gives rise to two different kind of realities that we see with the generally, typically, it's not a one-to-one -one correlation, but the typically feminine-minded empathetic and the masculine systematic is that the empathetic lives in a social world, whereas the systematic is more, uh, comprehends more the, the, the real world, the physical world. You can't socially construct, i.e. group wishful think a building to stay up or, or an aeroplane to stay in the air. But what you can do is socially construct people's reactions to what they perceive as social status. And that's what she's trying to do. And just to spell it out, I think the reason should be quite clear, but women like Mary Madigan will have increased opportunity if she were able to successfully socially construct a, an idea among the population that men like Chris Hemsworth should strive to be worthy of dating her. And should she ever bestow her company and attention upon men like Chris and Pete, they should count themselves lucky. <laughs> so that's what we talk about social construction as a method of negotiating and trading status and it has obvious opportunities and benefits for some people the method she's going about this is what we call undermining is it true of reality that she even believes these opinions no no my personal estimation is that mary madigan should chris hemsworth ever look twice at her would faint <laughs> and throw herself at him given the slightest, slightest chance. But what she's doing is using words to bluff and to, to bring his status down in the eyes of other people. And she's, once again, if you accuse her of doing this, she would deny it and that's what they call plausible deniability. They would, they would do what is very common, this deny, reverse, psychologize, which is say, if you said to her, I think what you're actually doing is bluffing that you have a higher status than you do for obvious reasons, she would say, no, I'm not. How dare you think that? Why do you care? what I say so much, what's wrong with you, why are you obsessing about me, you must want to date me, should go all AOC on you. <laughs> but the reality is that I don't think she's bored of Chris Hemsworth at all. <laughs> I don't think she's been in enough proximity to, to be able to experience enough of Chris Hemsworth to be bored of him. I think her problem is the exact opposite, that she has no experience with Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> it also speaks to another tendency of some people these days is a hyper consumption. 
you know, to consume is, we all know what the word consumption means, but hyper-consuming, which is basically another way of saying these people will consume resources, status, opportunity, and then turn around and just say, great, what's next? They're never happy. And so what she's basically saying is I've had my social thrills of people like Pete Evans and Chris Hemsworth and Keanu Reeves and now I'm bored. I'm bored. So she's once again as a tool of social signaling, she's putting herself on a pedestal saying yes these absolute hunks of high status masculinity are boring to me now. Entertain me do better because I deserve better because reasons. <laughs> it's it's pretty funny actually. It's pretty funny. Um, like I said though, she seems like a lovely person, um, and I wish her all the best. But at the end of the day, this social construction of trying to raise and lower people's status as a strategy trying to spread it as a social strategy among other people that might feel the same way. This undermining, making up silly reasons, you know, to, to justify trying to lower someone else's social status. It's all a form of social manipulation. And the trick with most forms of social manipulation, because if you react too overtly to it, you become the bad guy. If you then turn around and insult or, or do anything worse than that directly, let me put it another way. If you respond to this style of passive aggression with any form of direct aggression, you become the bad guy. They can cry victim. And because people who aren't very invested in understanding these dynamics and maybe look at the scenario from the outside in at a very surface level, they'll often take the side of the supposedly victimized passive aggressor. So the trick with most forms of manipulation is to understand what's going on. Understand these terms, social construction, which basically means group wishful thinking, reinforced and amplified by repetition socially such that it creates an idea in people's minds and they, they make different choices based on those ideas. And undermining, which is an attempt to use words to manipulate for the purpose of lowering someone else's status, lowering someone else's opportunity to cooperative interactions. So it's a strategy, it's a strategy. And the trick with this strategy and others like it is to not be fooled into thinking what they say is happening is actually the truth and to see the underlying incentives that are driving the behavior. It's, it's operational, as James Lindsay is saying. It serves a purpose. It's not likely that she honestly believes, I would say it's impossible, that she honestly believes that she sees Pete Evans and Chris Hensworth as low status that she's bored of. <laughs> I think it's absolutely quite the opposite. And it, what she's doing is a social strategy to achieve that goal. And it's important to see these social strategies and understand why they are employed because they happen all the time. You will find this in dating, you'll find this in your workplace, and you'll definitely see it in politics. And my goal is to point them out because A, they're hilarious. Um, B, I like these sort of analyses. But C, most importantly, is I want you, dear listener, to be free of this type of manipulation. I want you to understand these underlying mechanisms and the self-interested and the self-interest that drives this strategy so that you don't have to be suckered into their frame. I want you to be free of their frame. And so, and once again, that is a, a useful way of understanding is that they're trying to construct a certain framing that is self-serving. Another way you deal with people who are trying to construct certain frames that suit them and don't suit you is to redefine the frame. 
which is what I'm doing here for Mary Madigan. I wish her all the best. She seems like a lovely person. But alas, I do believe that Chris Hemsworth, should he ever proposition her, I do believe that she would give him the time of day and she would indeed date him. Hmm. <laughs>